In this video, we're stepping through how to live stream on mobile with a step-by-step -step checklist to help you avoid all the big bad things that can happen while you're live and to get professional results with your iPhone or Android, whether you're streaming to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or pretty much any other platform. Hey, it's Justin from Primal Video, where we help you leverage video to amplify your business and brand. And in this video, we're gonna be talking you through our step-by-step -step live streaming checklist for smartphones to help you get professional results and to avoid all the major pitfalls that can ruin your live streams. So let's jump straight into it. And while we're going through, make sure you drop a note down below. What's your favorite platform to live stream on? And also share a link to your profile and a quick note around what you talk about so that others in the Primal Video community can follow along with your live streams as well. All right, so step number one is to plan out your content. Now, it's an obvious one when you hear it, put a plan together, but a lot of people don't, and it can make your live stream ramble on or be stressful for you while you're actually live. So you're gonna help your viewers to consume your content because it's going to be in a logical structure for them, and it's gonna help you while you're presenting your live as well. Now, you don't need to go overboard here and have a full word-for-word -word script. Just have a simple structure that you can work from and maybe some dot points and notes of all the things that you wanna cover so that you're not trying to think of things on the fly. So a great simple structure that you could use for your live streams is to start them out with a hook. So that's where you're saying what you're gonna actually cover off in this live stream, what you're gonna talk about, what your viewers can expect. Then jump into an intro about you, your channel, what you're looking to do. Then you can get into the actual content itself and cover off on all those things you just said you're gonna cover. Then you can finish it off with a bit of a recap or a summary of everything that you've covered and then a call to action. So the action that you want them to take next after watching your live stream. So again, you don't need to overcomplicate this, but having a simple plan, having a simple structure and some dot points or notes around how this is gonna go down and all the things that you wanna cover is going to make it much better for you to produce it and much better for your viewers to watch it. Step number two is to pick a location. Now, whether it's inside, outside, whether you're gonna be walking around or sitting down or standing up, it's going to be based around the type of live stream that you'd like to create. But a couple of things to keep in mind would be how much light is in the area that you're going to be filming in? Is there any distracting background noise? Or is the background itself going to be too distracting for your viewers? So when you're picking your location, you wanna keep those things in mind so that again, your viewer is getting the best experience and so that you're not actually being distracted while you're presenting the live stream either. Now, leading on from that, once you've picked your location, step number three is to test your internet connection. Now, obviously these are a live stream. It's based on your internet speed as to how good the results are gonna be. So you wanna have decent internet. So running a speed test will show you how good the internet actually is at your current location. So to do that, you just need to head to the website speedtest.net or download the free app from Speed Test. Now, if you run a few speed tests and your upload speed is less than two to 2.5 megabits per second, then look at some other options. Maybe try a different internet connection, try LTE or 4G, try a different Wi-Fi if you can, or if all else fails, try and move to a different location that has better internet. Or at least go live, but let your viewers know that your internet may be a bit patchy or might, may not be good enough and that you may experience some trouble through the live stream. So just be upfront if your internet isn't going to be as good as it could be, and that there could be some potential problems. Your viewers will understand and will then set that expectation that if something does happen and if there's a dropout, then it's not so much of a big deal. Step number four is to set up your phone. Now this is using a tripod if you've got access to one or sitting your phone on a bookshelf, whatever it is, wherever possible, get your phone out of your hands so that it is stable. Now you wanna try and position your phone so that whether you're standing, sitting, or walking around, that the camera in your phone is slightly below eye level. I do mean ever so slightly. If you're struggling with it, just hold it at eye level, but you wanna get that height set up correctly. For best results, if you've got access to a microphone to plug in, whether it's a shotgun microphone or a lavalier microphone, they're gonna increase the quality of your stream by making the audio good. Now, if you're looking for microphone recommendations for smartphones, check out the video up in the cards now. If you don't have an additional microphone, then obviously still do your live streams, but try to find a location with minimal background noise so that you're not picking up a heap of background noise in your live stream or somewhere that's out of the wind as well because wind is going to totally kill your audio, especially if you're just using the built-in microphone on your smartphone. And lastly, if you've got access to any lights, make sure you're lighting yourself or the subject of your video as the priority and any additional lights, use them to light up your background. If you don't have any access to lights, then position yourself where you're getting light from something like a window maybe, or out in direct sunlight. The biggest thing to be aware of with our smartphones is that they're not great in low light. So using additional lights is going to make your videos look better. 
Now, once again, if you don't have any of this additional gear, you can still get great results, but these are the things that you could use to up your game as you progress. Step number five is an obvious one when you hear it, but that's to clean your camera lens. These are our phones, they're up against our faces. They could be makeup or dirt or fingerprints or anything on them. Make sure that you're wiping it on your shirt or even better, if you've got a lens cleaning cloth, wipe it on that, but clean the camera lens and you get a much clearer image. Step number six is to set up your broadcast or to set up your live stream. Now, if you're just going live as an impromptu live or a random live, then I'd still recommend that you create a title and a description for your live stream that you can paste in as you're live or as you're going live so that anyone watching or anyone finding you on the different platforms will at least know what your live stream is about and what you're talking about before they actually click to join. Now, if you're going live as a scheduled live stream or a pre-planned live stream, then again, you'll still want your title and a description, but you can also add things like a thumbnail image, all the links to all the things that you're gonna cover and all the things you're gonna mention. You can get all of those set up first so that as people are watching, all of those things are good to go. And at the moment you've finished your live stream, that thumbnail image is either there to upload at that point or it's already on there because you've set it up before you've gone live. Step number seven is to do a test broadcast. Now this is something that you can't do on all platforms, but on places like YouTube and on Facebook, you definitely can. So by doing a test, this is where you're going to go live just to yourself or just to a closed group or just to a couple of friends or family members or someone that can check the live stream for you, make sure that everything is as you want it, that the background noise is good, the audio is good, the light and everything looks good, and everything is the way that you want it before you go live publicly. So it's a good idea to do a test first. Step number eight is another obvious one as well, is to actually tell people that you're about to go live or that you're going live. It's a great way to get people on there if they know that it's actually happening. So jump onto your social media channels, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you have, and tell people that you're going live. Now I'd recommend here, the earlier you can tell them, the better, and maybe give them another reminder, 15 minutes or five minutes before you actually go live so that they're actually going to jump on. Now there's an awesome tool that we use for Facebook Lives called Live Leap, and that will help you automatically broadcast and share out your live stream while you're actually live. So you don't need to worry about doing it while you're live. Live Leap takes care of that for you, and it posts to Facebook groups, posts to Twitter, will even broadcast on your website and put a notification on there telling people that you're actually live. So Live Leap is a great way to take a lot of the pressure off in telling your audience that you're actually live. And again, all the links to everything that we're covering in this video will be in the description below. And that leads us to step number nine, which is to actually go live, to press that broadcast button and to start your live stream. Now you wanna make sure that you're mentioning as soon as possible the hook and teasing out what the actual live stream is about and filling people in and what they can expect from the live stream. And the main reason that you wanna do this is not just for the people that are watching and jumping on immediately, but probably more so for the people watching the replay. You wanna keep the hook and the content short and concise and upfront without all the small chat and welcoming people into your live stream so that you're respectful of the people that are watching your videos afterwards. In most cases, you're gonna have more views on the replay than you will people joining your immediate live stream. Doing this and keeping your content on point and concise, at least for the first part of your live stream, will also make it easier for you to repurpose this content onto other platforms down the track as well. While you're live, you'll also wanna make sure that you're making eye contact with your viewers. So you're looking directly at the camera lens. Now this can be distracting if you're using the front facing camera on your phone because you'll be inclined to look at yourself but you've really got to fight that urge and look and talk and communicate with the camera lens so that your viewers feel that you're looking and talking directly to them. Now, obviously, if you're doing a Q&A and you want to read the questions and those sorts of things, glance down, read the comments, read the questions, but when you're answering them and actually communicating with your audience, then you want to make sure that your eye contact is with them so it's at the camera lens. It's also a good idea to let your viewers know in your live streams how the live stream is actually going to go down, how it's going to run, so that there will be sections for Q&A, that you'll be looking at the comments periodically, and that there might be set times for you to actually interact with them in and around the content itself. So again, this is all setting that expectation for the people that are watching live and the people that are watching the replay as well, and trying to batch or keep all the content together or as close to being together without having a heap of small talk and Q&A mixed in amongst it. But this is also gonna come down to the type of live streams that you're creating and a talk show kind of live stream or an interview live stream could be totally different. But as a general rule, be mindful of the people that are just gonna be watching the replay and aren't there with the interactive parts. So you can try to keep that content up front or at least structured together in blocks so that the people that aren't there live aren't really missing out on that live element 
of the content. And the last tip that I have for you is while you're live, just be aware of your surroundings and what's going on in the area that you're actually live streaming in. Is there something distracting that's going on nearby? Is there something in the background that could be distracting your audience? The focus needs to be on you and the content that you're delivering. So just be aware of what's going on around you and background noise and noise levels from different things. Again, it's gonna come down to where you're actually broadcasting, but things like background noise or distractions in the background will take the focus away from you and the content that you're delivering. And it could mean that you need to get up and move to a different location midstream just to keep that good experience for your viewers watching. And it's also really, really important to have fun and enjoy the live streamings you're creating. If you're bringing good energy and you're having fun with it, then your viewers are going to have fun and they're gonna be more engaged in the content that you're delivering as well. Now, if you're interested in the best gear, our top gear that we recommend for live streaming on your smartphone, check out the video linked on screen here somewhere. And I'll see you in the next one.